Hi everybody. I'd like to share my progress on a new project I began last month, an 8-bit breadboard CPU. I was inspired by the way YouTuber Ben Eater presented the theory behind this project. I really appreciated his level of detail, laying down basics, and then building on top of what you just learned. I believe some of the design decisions were done for instructional purposes. Ben's design made more sense to me once I figured this out. I've enjoyed more than 35 years in a variety of IT careers. This project reminds me of how expert craftspersons create samplers to show off their work. For example, stitchers making a needlepoint sampler, welders building a working T-Rex model, Jedi Knights building their lightsaber. But seriously, this has been a great follow-up to my Altair 8800 emulator project. From software 8080 CPU emulation to in real life hardware emulation, I'm having a blast. These are the projects I wanted to do back when I was in middle school. We can um, begin by taking a look at the clock and uh, it controls a lot of the functions on the project. Uh, I've got a run stop switch here. It's in the run position right now. You can see the clock blinking. Uh, if I uh, put it in the stop position, the clock stops. I can single step, and uh, then if I apply this halt signal, uh, the single step doesn't work anymore, nor does the uh, stop run, but if we take the halt signal away, then the clock starts working again. There's also a uh, variable resistor here for controlling the speed of the clock. Uh, over here we've got the 8-bit A register and the 8-bit B register. Uh, both of those feed into this adder uh, where it can subtract by uh, controlling this signal here. And uh, then we've got an 8-bit data bus here and uh, all of these can read or write from that 8-bit data bus using uh, different control lines. So um, let's start by um, loading a 1 into the B register and uh, we'll set, that's the least significant bit there and we've got a one now in the B register and uh, now if we take this away you'll see that it stays in the B register so it's latched in there and uh, what we're going to do is um, let's take the output well let's let's take the B register and load it into the A register just to see how that works so with this uh, control, we're telling it to put the contents of the latches out onto the bus. And then with this one on the next clock cycle, it will latch those in and we'll see that happen on the LEDs down here. So it's latched that in. We're done with that now. And um, we, we're done with this, so we'll turn that off. And now what we're seeing is uh, we've got a one in the B register and a one in the A register and that uh, the adder is now showing us that add, adds up to a 2. Uh, if we change this from adding to subtracting, we'll see that uh, 1 minus 1 is 0, and uh, that is correct. Um, another cool thing we can kind of do with this is a, make it count, and uh, if we take the output of the counter and put that on the bus, put this signal here, so now we've got this going out on the bus, and if we tell the accumulator to load this, that's a 2, so we'll be loading a 2 in here, and then it adds the 2 on the 1, and we get a 3, and it puts a 3 out, and it loads a 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4, so we get a 4, then it puts a 4, and so it just keeps counting there and uh, you can see it counting up in binary and again if we switch this we'll see it's counting backwards now which is what we'd expect if we were subtracting one instead of adding one go back to forward again and uh, i'll start increasing increasing the clock speed and uh, we'll see how fast it can go That's the limit. I think I could make the clock go a little faster with the different values of resistors, but that's uh, that's full speed and uh, looks pretty good to me. Let's uh, put it in reverse. Oh, 
Okay, well that's it for part one. Coming in part two, we'll take a look at the program counter and the 16-byte RAM. And as always, thanks for watching.